Hey, everybody. David Skarika, stock chart of the day here. One of my middle of the night charts. I was going to do it in the morning. Just I was thinking about doing it. Sometimes I think about doing these in the evening and then I'm, I, I make dinner and then I'm like, I don't really feel like doing it after, you know, your belly is full. I'm watching TV or something and or reading and I just don't feel like doing it. And then I go to sleep and wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, ah, you know what, let's do it now. Uh, so today's obviously stock chart of the day is the inflation number came in hot, uh, 0.4%. Everyone was expecting 0.3%. Uh, I think we're about 3.5% year over year. So here's what's kind of interesting. Um, you can see March 3rd, 2024, 3.5%. This is the BLS. So is that it looks like to me, if you go look at like the 1970s uh, inflation, there were like, there were like basically three spikes. One was like in 1970 and then one was in 74 and then the last one was in the late 80s and what happened is you'd get a spike and then it would come down and then it would base in another area and then spike again so i think what looks like to me you know we did get as low as three percent we're basing in kind of this three percent area and then we're going to get ready for the next spike higher here and you know and everything i've talked about with the amount of debt that has to be rolled over it has to hit the market the amount of debt that's going to have to be monetized you can kind of see why that's going to happen so I've had a lot of people like tell me, oh, they have to cut interest rates at some point because of like the amount of debt. And I'm like, look at when you monetize debt, it doesn't matter what the interest rate is because they're printing debt and basically paying the interest back to themselves. It's super inflationary. You know, the reason you say, well, the mod covers don't just print money and buy all their debt, you know, because then the interest would be paid back to themselves. It's because it's super inflationary and their currency would completely, you know, collapse. And the U.S. has more leeway to do that than other countries because it's the reserve currency of the world, right? Japan had a little more leeway too because all their debt is domestically owned. But you know that's what I think ultimately is going to happen here. So that's why I, I think like you know we're used to in the last fifteen years, really since post um, uh, COVID, that they cut rates to zero and they monetize, right? They cut rates to zero. They do QE. They did it in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Uh, you know they they started QE again in twenty thirteen. Uh, they did it during, uh, you know, COVID 2020, 2021. But now, I, you know, we're in a secular probably a bull market for interest rates, which means a bear market for bonds. So I, I could see them like this time around monetizing, but not really being able to cut rates because of higher inflation. Remember, one reason they could cut rates to zero and do this in the past was, you know, after COVID, COVID was short term deflationary. You know, and inflation stayed at under a percent or under two percent for like till the end of 2020 before it really took off. Right. You know, um, you know, 2013, you know, when they did, you know, uh, the big QE then, you know, you can see inflation was one to two percent, you know, after the financial crisis, when they, they started key in March of 29, you know, there was still kind of a short period of deflation after the financial crisis into July of 2009, you know, and um, so they, they could do all this stuff you know, and rates could be zero. Well, now we don't have that luxury, you know, at three percent here. So. Um, and probably if they start monetizing at some point, you're going to go back up to five, 10 percent pretty quickly on inflation. So um, I think today it looks like to me that, you know, we're seeing increasingly this just kind of base here. I don't know how long we'll stay between three and four percent that those things can actually even take a year or two to, to play out. And I think there's a base here. But one thing I can not tell you is. You know, and I've been, I, I did a 180 on interest rates. I've talked about this in the past. I really believe the rate cut cycle or is is not really going to happen now. Um, the only way it will happen is if at some point the market really breaks in the one night. You can see this is July. Going out to July now, there's only a 37% chance of one hike. Or sorry, one cut, you know. Going out to September, we can see, yeah, September now has a 63% of a cut. So, and then we go to December, 475 is two cuts. That's basically 50-50 now, or two cuts by the end of the year. So we've gone from having six to eight cuts a few months ago, which I always said was successive. I thought it was going to be more like three, four, to one to two cuts. And I just don't think the cuts are going to happen. Because like my, if we are in that scenario that I talked about, and it looks like we you know I talked about maybe having an April-May correction before another move higher into the summer. If we are in that scenario right now, if if the market blows off in the summer, they're not going to you know, cut interest rates. If the Dow's 45,000 and the S&P is almost 6,000, they're not going to cut rates. So maybe they'll do a surprise rate hike 
because everything will get frothy again. So, you know, maybe what will happen is we'll get a correction here on fears that interest rates are moving higher. Maybe then everyone accepts the fact, okay, they're not going to cut rates, but they're not going to raise them either. And, and maybe something like NVIDIA has another blowout quarter. And then you, boom, you blow off into the summer. It's, it's, uh, it's always impossible to predict those kinds of things. But, you know, like I've said before, even if like I talked about the home builders being a bubble, even if we look at the home builders here, you can see this here, um, uh, the, the home construction index here, uh, you, you can see it, it, um, uh, this here. So, uh, I'm going lower here. So, uh, uh, you know, really big time, 5% drop, huge drop here. But maybe like they, they pull back here and they're going to have some kind of rally. Because even if we go back to 2005, when they topped, I talked about the Haitian cab driver story um, in my last uh, update. We're just going to look at the 2005 home builders. Just the topping period. You'll see, yeah, a big drop, kind of like what they're seeing now. And then this rally here. So like for me, shorting, you're never going to get the exact top. So I would look to start shorting this rally. Maybe they see another blow off to a new high. You know, th th this is the summer. The summer is like the home building season. Uh, you can see in April of 20, 2005, there was a, a, a pretty good drop. And then they continued to blow off. So maybe we, we we see like another high. But at the very least, we should see this kind of rally. Right. So um and I, this will take a number of months to play out. You know that, that you can see that the high was in July. The 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 story I told with the cab driver was right about here. So early July, it was a thousand. The home builder stood up, went up another ten percent, and then you know ended up cratering uh, to the lows, eighty five, uh, actually ninety percent to the lows, and eighty five percent from when I told that story. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking at here. So, uh, but it definitely looks to me like inflation is now bottoming. Uh, on this cycle, we're not a cycle. We're not going to see. We we'll go to TLT here. Actually, we got to go here because that's 2005. This is the TLT. You can see the TLT is, you know, kind of broke. I talked about it breaking support at 92 the other day. Now it really broke it. Took a, took a few days to really significantly break it. Broke it. Now it's down at 90. Interest rates are at multi month highs. This is the TNX. You can see 454, the highest on the on the 10 year bond since November. And are actually now <clears throat> closer to the highs of October in the 10 year bond than we are the lows of December. We're up about 75 basis points from these lows, and we're about 50 basis points from the highs. So, you know, and so that means mortgage rates are going to go up, et cetera, et cetera. So, like I said, it's always a, 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 a you know, this isn't a market commentary update. And, um, uh, uh, but, but this is, you know, kind of what I see happening. So look, at, and I, I want to talk about something about stock chart of the day here and kind of what way I'm thinking, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, you know, what, what, cause look at this thing that happened with Inca one, I don't hide from stuff really kind of opened my eyes. Cause you know, their sponsor company, I I've been going over their balance sheet. There were a lot of warning signs. A lot of the loans they have done. Like I said, I like Edward Kelly, the CEO, and I understand he's just trying, he was trying to get this thing into full production, but a lot of the loans were on pretty bad terms. I have to be honest with you about it. And I, and that was, and I, and I apologize. I should have, if I had just been totally, you know, you know, and I like the deal. I put my own money into it. And um, so, but like, I, I should have like kind of been more cognizant to some of those warning signs or, or sorry, so more aware of more of those warning signs. So then I was kind of like, well, do I really want to go the route of having all these sponsor companies? Now, right now, uh, you know, I, I just got a new sponsor company today, uh, Regency Silver. I've talked about it in the past, but I really like this deal. It's kind of at the ground floor. I'm going to continue with the, some of the other current sponsor companies. I don't mind it for the next 12 months because I think we're at the bottom of the junior market coming up. So I'm still going to build this thing as a free site. But I think what ultimately what I'm going to do with Stock Chart of the Day is, you know, I have a little Patreon. I'll start a sub stack with it. I want to make it a mixture of, you know, doing these daily charts and information and then also buying maximum pessimism, uh, buying the beaten up assets, which I think is the way to make up um, uh, this. So probably what I'm going to do in the next 12, 18, 24 months is have the sponsor company still kind of drive the revenue flow for this so I can build it. And then at some point, I'll probably make this almost a full pay service with one or two free updates a week. So it'll be almost the opposite of this now where the pay service now is one or two pay updates, 
these kind of updates here, if I don't talk about site, uh, stocks, will be pay updates and there'll be a free ser uh, service. Because part of the reason is I don't want to be in situations like my ultimate plan when I first started with these sponsor companies would be like, look, I charge a minimal fee now. And then when the gold market gets hot, you know, I can charge big fees because I'll have way more traffic on this. Because uh, I you know I am, I, I, because of the way I've been over the years, I am kind of associated with gold and precious metals and resources. And then, um, and then I'll, you know, instead of charging companies, you know, whatever, to 2,500 to 5,000 a year, I'll be able to charge them 10 or 20,000 a year as a sponsor. And then if you get three, you know, 30 companies, that's a pretty good, you know, side. And this is, I consider this almost like a side gig because I still, um, you know, my main thing is trading and 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 doing the macro research, right? That's a that's a pretty good well, one of my sources of income. But then I was kind of like, look, I don't want to be beholden to these uh, to the companies. I want to be independent. Um, and basically, this me not getting those sponsorship money it does not mean I'm not independent. You know, because I'm not going to allow that. I, companies have to know that too. Like, obviously, I'm picking the companies too, so the companies that I like, which makes it easier. But I don't want to get in a situation where, you know, I've had this in the past where I've been in a company and it's blown up. It happens to everyone, right? Where a company doesn't do well, it doesn't execute. It happened to us at Stock Charter Day with another company that, that I'm not going to talk about back in 2022. Um, with, with Addicted to Profits and my friend Mike Swanson at Wall Street Window, a company we were promoting. They basically said they were going to go into production and they never went into production. They're still not in the production to this day. And um, it made us look bad. And look at I, I just believe the guys, and I like the guys, and they didn't, they didn't fulfill their side of the bargain. But I'm the one who has to wear it, right? So that, that's what ends up happening. Uh, and I take responsibility for that because you know, um, um, you know, I, I, I should have been maybe a little more wary in that case as well. So, um, but you know, for the but the, the other companies do extremely well, and I don't want to dwell on the negative, but it really. Kind of like I was thinking about it. One reason I can't sleep is when I have bad things like this happen. Uh, there's an old story by um, Howie Long. You know, I'm a big football fan that it, they played the Washington Redskins. Um, let's bore you with some football here. Um, in 1983, Raiders, um, the year they won the Super Bowl. Last year they won the Super Bowl. How sad is that as a Raider fan? Uh, but anyhow. It was considered one of the greatest regular season games ever. The Raiders lost 37-35. They they jumped out to a huge lead. Um, you can see they were up 35-20, and then they blew that lead. The Red, Redskins had one of the best offenses in NFL history. But anyhow, if you go look at the box score here, how long at five sacks? So he's playing one of the, the Redskins were one of the greatest offenses in NFL history at the time. Um, he had five sacks. Um, and then he said, though, he blew two or three running plays that game. And all he did all night was lay there in bed and not think about the five sack. This five sack game, as we all know, if you're a football fan, do not happen too often. He sat there and thought about the two or three run plays he blew. So that's kind of what I do is I'm not thinking about Endeavor Silver or Fortuna or some of these stocks I picked that are already up, you know, 100 percent, 80, 100 percent in just five, six weeks. I'm thinking about this, 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 this stock that hasn't done well, but. I also don't want to subject to myself to that in the future because, you know, what's that, the, you know, the insanity is um, doing the same thing over and over again, you know. So um, what I'm going to do now is talk chart of the day, just a long story short with that. I'll probably get eight to 10 sponsored companies for the next 12 to 18 months. I think that's fair because, you know, um, I think, you know, to the end of next year that we'll have a very good market in the juniors. And then I'll probably hopefully build the channel to where I'm getting thousands and thousands of views per video. And then I'll probably just make these, these videos, you know, seven or $8 a month on a sub stack or a Patreon is, is not a lot of money, especially for almost daily updates. And I'll probably make them, you know, like I said, uh, uh, and make this a pay service with, um, you know, a week, a week a, maybe a weekly update. It's free. So that that's essentially what we're going to do. Um, you know, so look, it's everything happens for a reason. Like, I don't know if I, that's cheesy. I don't know if other people believe that, but you know, I, I would rather this what happened recently happened at the beginning of the market. I had, I had a deal that blew up in 2003, almost 20 years ago when I was first starting out and they ended up, you know, having an SEC investigation and I actually ended up testifying against the guy, um, uh, you know, um, cause he was doing an, another shady deal after that. And I knew what the guy was up to. And, um, and, but it happened right at the beginning of the gold market. And I was kind of like, you know what? I was a young guy. I was 25 years old. I was like, you know what? This is probably good. This happened at the beginning of the gold market. 
because um um the gold bull market sorry because it, you know it, 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 i'm not going to allow this to happen again during this bull market and you know there's mistakes has happened over you're always gonna have stocks go down but you know, so so anyhow that that's where we're going to stand right now a very limited amount of sponsors just to make a little side cash and uh, and basically subsidize the fact that i'm not really having this as a huge pay service as of yet and then at some point in probably the next 12 to 18 24 months make this more of a uh, um, a full-time uh a pay service so um and, you know and it's not going to be anything you know ostentatious it's going to be the stub stack patreon seven eight dollars a month kind of thing okay so i guess that's enough for today i hope you like the howie long story uh so uh, to just to come around i wanted to talk a little bit wanted to explain that need to maybe get that off my chest a bit but looks like inflation is bottoming uh here looks like we're not going to get a lot of rate uh cuts and uh so that's also to be aware because at some point that's going to hit the market i don't know if it'll be a crash type scenario in the fall or just kind of peaks out now, March, April, kind of like it did in 2000. But even in 2000, it didn't really start to drop to the fall. There was a drop in April, May, then rallied into the summer. The S&P actually almost touched its high again in August of 2000 before it rolled over again. So maybe that will happen. I don't know. But I, I, I definitely think that, you know, with it looking like we're not going to see these rate cuts, at, you know, and so much is baked into the market, both interest rate and equity markets, that we were going to get these rate cuts. I think we're definitely seeing um, <clears throat> signs that um, we, we we could we could top out here uh, in the equity markets um, in the in the coming months because it was kind of being dependent on on money getting cheaper, which is not going to happen. <laughs>